Hey guys, let's talk about some new lip products today. You know I love a good lip swatch. I have a ton of videos here, a whole playlist of them if you want to go check them out. Just a ton of lip swatches and lip product, lip collection reviews. Normally I like to review as many of the shades in one collection as I can, just so you can get a feel for how all the shades compare side by side in a similar lighting situation, because sometimes it could be hard to get your hands or like find products in stores, swatch them in stores. However, I was on Ulta's website the other day, well, more like maybe a month ago at this point I've been trying these and there were a lot of lip collections out there like too many for me to feel comfortable buying all the shades in so I picked up you know three four a couple shades here and there from all of them and I'm just gonna give you reviews of the few shades that I have here today I have one two three four different collections or formulas that I'm gonna be swatching from so if you're only interested in one or two in particular I'm gonna put timestamps below that way you can jump to the ones that you care most about but but no matter what, I'm gonna be swatching them and reviewing them. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first I wanna talk about the unexpected winners that I have here today. I have winners, I have losers, but these were easily the most surprising because they're from a brand that you just don't hear a lot about, Kiko Milano. I have talked about them kind of here and there. I don't have a lot from the brand. They're not super widely available in person, so it's just doesn't not really top of mind. But Ulta has a pretty good selection of their products online, and I saw in the new launches that they had two in one. They're called Green Me Lip and Cheeks. I picked up two shades in them, and they're these chubby lip and cheek crayons. Now I'm always skeptical when it comes to multi-use products because they can either be really good and amazing and all of a sudden you have one product that's a jack of all trades in your makeup collection and it's like fantastic. Or the brand maybe spread themselves a little bit too thin and it doesn't really do any one thing all that spectacularly and it's a total dud. These are amazing. They have an ultra creamy texture that gives a ton of pigment to the lips. One shade that I wore recently in an Instagram video is the one 106 that I'm sure has an actual shade to it, but the container just says 106. It comes in a wooden or at least something that feels like a wood pencil exterior. Then you can see the chunky product here on the end. It has a little bit of a shine. It dries down a little bit, which is really excellent, especially for the cheeks. What I like to do is take a little bit of this on my fingers and dab directly onto my cheeks. They blend out beautifully, despite the fact that they are a thicker texture and kind of waxy is not the right word, but similar too waxy is what I would say, along with that thicker texture. And sometimes that can be a real pain when it comes to making your foundation or any makeup you're wearing underneath it move around as you're applying it. But I mean, you can see how I'm applying it here. I just dab straight up and down from the skin with my finger and it doesn't disturb the makeup underneath at all. Like I said, it sets down a little bit. So even though it maintains a little bit of a balmy texture, especially on your lips, you don't feel any like extreme tackiness on your face throughout the day, which is also kind of annoying when a product does that. So I have that shade 106. And then the other shade that I really like is, well, and the only other one that I have is 104. And this is more of a bricky, corally red. It's not like a strong brick corally red. I'd say it's a medium intensity brick coral red and a really pretty one for the cheeks because red is not often a blush color that I tend to go for. It's peach, soft pink, mauve. Red is just not, it always seems like it's going to be too over the top for me, but there's something about the way they have added a little bit something softer in this shade that makes it less intimidating to reach for red, but definitely changes it up with that reddish terracotta undertone. So I'm actually wearing a mixture of these two today because I swatched one on either cheek before this video when I was swatching them all, and then I just combined them real quick before the video so I didn't look too uneven. And they actually, despite having different undertones, I feel like complement the look very nicely, but they also wear beautifully individually as well. So if you were into multitaskers, something quick and incredibly easy, but still very pigmented to apply to both the lips and the cheeks, these, I mean, run not walk people. Okay, now let's move on to a new lip collection that I had incredibly high expectations for. They are the Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayons. And I had such high expectations because the liquid matte lip ink that Maybelline has is my holy grail lip liquid lipstick. Like it does not budge on me whenever I need something that is going to be comfortable, feels like nothing on the lips, incredibly pigmented and truly lasts until I need it to come off. That is what I'll reach for. And it's what I would recommend to anyone who asks, no matter what your lip 
preference is because at this point they have so many colors in the range that I think that they have something for everyone. Needless to say, I really was hoping these would do the same thing and they do. They are in a crayon format, a softer crayon format, so they glide on really nicely. They're very pigmented with very few passes. They take on me anywhere between 30 to 45 seconds, probably a minute to set down totally. And then once they are set, they are transfer proof. However, I have found that my lips look a little bit more dried out within a shorter period of time while wearing these as opposed to the liquid version of them. Additionally, with eating, I noticed that these wear away faster. Like if I'm eating a salad and it's an oil or vinegar based dressing, these will wear away in the center of lips much faster than the liquid lipstick version of these. So I don't know that these are quite as good in terms of lasting power, but I do think they did a good job with the formula in terms of how thin it feels on your lips. Like it feels pretty weightless. The pigmentation is amazing. And you do get transfer proof wear out of a pencil, which to me is kind of the whole point out of this format. If you are not a liquid lip kind of person, you really like a pencil format when applying. These I think you'll really like. And in terms of all the other, you know, crayon pencil type lip products I have, these are easily the longest lasting. They just aren't quite as long lasting as the liquid lipsticks. But really like them and the shades that I have, the one that I've been wearing quite a bit, probably in a few Instagram videos as well, um, is the shade Enjoy the View or number 20. This is on me kind of a your lips but better but with a deeper, stronger, mauve undertone to it and in part why I wear it with so many different looks because it's relatively close to my natural skin tone, just amped up a little bit. But then I also got some good bold shades, one of which I was wearing in the video I just posted yesterday actually where I talk about my favorite summer foundations. This is called the shade Laugh Louder, number 40. It is a bold, bold orange. You know me, I love a good bold orange lip and this definitely did it for me. If you're scared of oranges, I would still say this is a good one. It has kind of a deeper terracotta, like red undertone to it. So I wouldn't say it's like ultra, you know, UV orange in case you're still not quite on the all the way orange train. You still want to dip your toe in it. I would say this is a very, this is pushing the brighter end of that spectrum in case you want to give it a try. But I guess I would say it's the difference between being bold and ultra bright. You know what I mean? Then the last shade that I have is number 45 or Hustle in Heels. This is like a true bricky terracotta red, like way less orange, more of those deep brown based red tones while still being very red. Like I don't think it looks like a brown, it just looks like a bold red with strong brown undertones, but a really pretty option if you're looking for a red or red is your color. I mean, honestly, red is everyone's color. It's just about finding your right match. Um, oh, and the other thing before I forget, all of these do have sharpeners in the end. So when you open them up at the top here, you pull the other end, there is the sharpener. So if and when, I mean, we all need a good sharp tip. When you dull this end down, you can still keep this sharp. And so you're getting those nice crisp lines when you apply, which I think is really important, especially if you're working with an ultra bold and long lasting lip color. You don't want to have dulled edges kind of giving you, you know, feather feathering around here. And then it just gets hard to clean up. And then you have a messy and long wearing lip line. <laughs> all right, now let's move into some glosses. The Revlon Ultra HD Vinyl Lip Polishes are incredible pigmented, high shine, lacquer like finish. And can we just talk about like, let me know if I am the only one here, but have you ever had packaging that looks looks so good you kind of want to eat it? Like this looks like candy to me. Is that weird? Moving on. The shades that I have here are Act Natural. This is another one of those shades that if you've seen any pictures or videos of me on Instagram, might've been wearing this one just because it goes with all the bold eye looks I have been loving to play around with lately. It's a light peachy based nude, then going in totally the opposite direction and a color you know I can't resist. Rule the World, which is an intense bubblegummy kind of pink, very vibrant blue based Barbie like pink shade. Up next, we're having a moody moment with the shade So Shady. This is a deep brown based burgundy shade, like a deep, like it's almost like a dark chocolate with a hint of burgundy into it, you know, less purple, more chocolate. And it's so, so beautiful. And then last up is Berry Bliss. And as the name suggests, it's a medium intensity berry shade. I said that like kind of meh, but it's a beautiful berry shade. But I think compared to like the last two shades I just named, this is about a mid-level intensity, very pigmented, but not nearly as bright 
or bold as so shady or rule the world. Now with all of these, my main concern and my main concern with any sort of highly pigmented lip gloss is will the pigment separate from the gloss medium? Because when that happens, it feathers, it bleeds into your fine lines and your lips are a mess come one, two hours into wear. That didn't happen at all with these. These stay in place so nicely throughout the day. Of course, they're not long wearing. They are a gloss after all, but when they are on your lips, they they just look pristine. Like there is no touching up, you know, running your fingernail or your finger along the edge of your lip line to keep cleaning it up. They just stay in place. They're ultra high shine and their pigmentation is like blow your mind intense. So I really like all of those and they actually remind me of the final lip collection I have to talk about today. They are the the new lippies from the Wet n Wild Pac-Man collection. Now they're calling them Ghost Gloss Brilliant to align with like the ghosts in the Pac-Man game, which is super cute. But the formula not only reminds me a lot of those Revlon lippies because they are a gloss texture, but they still have a lot of pigment, a lot of pigment that is pretty opaque for the most part. We'll talk about that one later. But they remind me so, so much of the Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit High Shine Liquid Lipsticks, which are basically glosses. I do have a video swatching and reviewing this entire collection in case you want to see all of those shades swatched, but this is exactly what that formula reminds me of. So maybe it's the same, they just renamed them for this collection, but in case you're curious, you want a good idea of what these feel like, if you tried the liquid cat suits, you've basically already tried this formula. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with all of these shades, with one exception. So let's go through them right now. The one that I'm wearing right now is the shade Blinky. This is a pretty it's like a bold red with really strong berry undertones to it. Then there is Clyde, which is a soft creamsicle orange shade. In the tube, it looks like it has ultra faint gold flecks or sparkle in it, but on the lips, I don't notice those coming through at all. It's actually pretty similar to the shade Act Natural from that Revlon collection. I would say the major difference though is that Clyde from Wet n Wild is a bit more orangey. Oh, and while we're talking about similar shades, I also pulled those that might be similar to the current liquid catsuit collection and Clyde is kind of similar to Peach Stole My Look. Again, Peach Stole My Look is a little bit cooler, more pink toned, whereas Clyde is that orangey, creamsicle kind of shade. I mean, actually, if we are doing comparisons, I'm just doing a little bit of lip gloss sleuthing right here. Uh, the Revlon Act Natural is kind of similar to the Wet n Wild Peach Stole My Look. I'll give you a close up, but those are the two side by side pretty similar. The Wet n Wild, I think, is a little bit less expensive than the Revlon in case you're looking for a very similar product in a similar shade. And something else about these liquid cat suits, in case you missed the video, this formula is almost identical to the Charlotte Tilbury Latex Love, I think she called them, and I believe they're still out, but very similar to that formula, and I actually found a couple of shade dupes for some of those shades in case you want to go check it out. Okay, next up in the Pac-Man collection is the shade Pinky, and I am a dummy. As I'm going through this, I just now realize that they are the shades of the actual ghosts. The shade Pinky is obviously pink, but it actually has kind of stronger purpley lavender undertones to it. I say that because when I was looking for a similar shade in the Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit collection, it's similar to Flirt Alert, but is less purple, more pink by comparison. So if you're into the purple, Pinky is a really fun shade, but if you want something equally as soft and pink, but less purple, Flirt Alert is your friend. And the last shade, this is the one that just didn't agree with me. It is the shade Inky. It's this really pretty in practice like vivid blue shade that just came off streaky on my lips. It's kind of puzzling to me because I have been impressed with all of the other bold shades within the Liquid Cat Suit collection, and this one just kind of fell short in terms of being totally opaque. So when it was sheer on my lips, I didn't mind it. It was the fact that it kind of clumped up in areas. So while it would be sheer in some parts, it would be then opaque and dark blue um, in others, like around the perimeter, or just, you know, it was streaky, streaky. <laughs> inky. Nope. It's streaky. Not even. And it just wasn't for me, maybe as a gloss over another lip product where the streakiness is harder to see, but worn alone, it just did not do it for me quite like the other shades in this collection or like the other shades in the permanent catsuit collection. Alrighty. So that was my mega drugstore lip review for the day. Let me know what you guys think. If there are any of these formulas that you're being particularly drawn to, if you're going to try any of them, pick them up, let us know down in the comments below. Besides that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.